Hey YouTube, my name's Dominique. Welcome to my channel. Hit the subscribe button because I'm about to tell you about my coochie problems and chances are you got coochie problems too. I was looking around YouTube and I noticed that I saw quite a few people talking about strep B, but everybody was pregnant. And uh, currently I am not with child, so. I didn't see any solutions. I saw a lot of people talking about something called d -manos. I tried that for a number of days. Um, in fact, I tried this one right here called UT Vibrance. It has 5,000 milligrams of d -manos, but I have to tell you, I still have symptoms of a strep B UTI, which lets me know that I haven't cleared it from my system yet. It's just not getting the job done. So I've been looking across Reddit, I'm looking all over the web. And I see a lot of people dealing with this issue, but I'm trying to resolve it without taking antibiotics. And I see a lot of bitches taking several strains of antibiotics and I just don't want to blow up my microbiome like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to keep the flora preserved, okay? And also I, my understanding is that people who take several rounds of antibiotics have much higher chances of ending up with autoimmune situations. And um, I have an extensive family history with you know, a number of people on both sides who have autoimmune conditions. And I just don't want to raise my odds, you know, because the family history is there. With that being said, I was looking all over the place and I see a lot of people talking about the, this right here. These are the Garden of Life Rob probiotics. I'll put a picture right here. It's for vaginal care. These have 50 billion um, bacteria probiotic strains uh, guaranteed. It says 38 different probiotic strains, and this one is supposed to be for vaginal flora balance and urinary tract health. I need urinary tract health because my coochie smells fabulous. <laughs> So I've been doing this and I took the first one today. Um, it says that a serving size is one capsule. I'm taking two. This is supposed to be a 30 day supply. So hell, I might bump up to three because I don't wanna take a bunch of antibiotics that are not going to work for me or that I'm gonna have to you know, try to find out how I can get all these bacteria back. I just don't wanna be a part of that movement. You know what's funny about strep B UTIs is it seems to be a very small percentage of people get them. And I don't know how I got this one, but I have a strong inclination to believe that it was the bidet. Um, we installed these new bidets in the house and you know, the lady bidet function, I think maybe caused water to flow back where it wasn't supposed to um, because you know, the jets was working and I was pushing the was pushing the buttons you know I was I was enjoying myself I felt like I was gonna need a cigarette after I got off the toilet but anyways I hope that I'm able to find a way to resolve this situation and I hope that we're able to talk about this more because I don't see enough women mentioning this you know I, I, I've been looking through reddit forums and trying to understand what the fuck are these bitches doing and a lot of people look like they've been dealing with this for years or like they had to take several rounds of antibiotics to be able to get things balanced and then start playing you know then they started um testing for things like uroplasma or something like that I never even heard of that shit but apparently it's an STD or something like that anyways long story short i will let you guys know how this goes and wish me luck okay i'm gonna give you guys an update um as time goes on and i hope that i'm able to get a urine another urine analysis and test negative and i'll let you guys know how it goes because the d manos did not work for my strep b uti and i was kind of hoping it was but then again, I thought I was gonna have the same UTI that 90% of the world has, you know? And I had no idea how common UTIs were. You know, I didn't know that they were so common that people of all age groups, men and women get them. But I guess women are more, you know, common to have them because of our anatomy, you know, everything being so close together and whatnot. All right, you guys, so it's the next morning and I just have to say, um, after taking the probiotics, I noticed a slight difference. Typically, when my bladder is full, I get this burning sensation, you know, not like a like pissing razor blades type of thing, like a 
but more like an annoying like your bladder is full and it's like a it's like a burning type sensation I don't know how else, how else to describe it but it feels like you know most of the time you're not aware that you have a urethra or okay never mind here let me explain it like this you know how when you first learn to put in tampons you figure out that the tampon is either in the right place or not in the right place by the way it feels in such that if it's not in the right place it's annoying you feel it if it's in the right place you pretty much don't feel that you get a chance to go on about your day that's how this is I feel like I like someone took a dial and turned the level of symptoms down so I was to say I haven't even I just took the probiotics for the first time last night and um, I'm gonna go ahead and go about my day or whatever um, but I just wanted to give that update that overnight I seem to have noticed a slight difference you know um, I, I, I feel a little bit of burning but it's like somebody turned everything down um, it'll be interesting to see how I feel later tonight I thought I was feeling a little bit of a difference a few out few hours after taking the probiotic but I kind of thought like no way it didn't work that fast it's in my head uh, I don't know I am I have to say today this morning I feel a little bit better so I will see how the rest of the day goes and this is only day two and I've had symptoms since the 28th of January and today is February 3rd and nothing has given me relief since so um that's pretty good and so far i haven't taken any antibiotics and i'd like to keep it that way okay so it's been a few days and i have been taking these raw uh probiotics i have to say guys it's uh it's been five days since i last spoke with you guys and i feel pretty fucking good initially i was having you know some symptoms of actually a uti and you know that was things like but but like different though though i have to say because i've never had a uh, uti that was caused by e coli it's the first uti i've ever had in my entire life and i didn't even know i had one until i went to the er for another unrelated thing you know i felt some mild discomfort but really nothing to write home about the reason i feel like maybe i missed it was because i was dealing with pain from something else that i couldn't even think about the mild pain that i was experiencing like you know in my in my side and then i would and then one thing i did notice was that um i started to feel like when my bladder was full there was like this burning sensation and not like fire in your pants burning nothing like that but it was like an annoying pesky like burning feel but you only feel it when your bladder is completely full and that's really the only thing that i would say um oh and i did start to feel like a uh, pain in my back and i felt like it was radiating you know um to my back and i understand that that is a symptom of utis but I have to say, after taking one of these probiotics, I noticed actually in a couple of hours that there was a bit of a difference that I was feeling. And at first I kind of chalked it up to like, that's a placebo effect, there's no way anything is happening that fast. But the following day, I noticed that I had a much, I felt symptoms a lot less, you know. Um, I started to not feel that burning sensation um, in my bladder when it was full. And also, I noticed that when I had to go to the bathroom, the feeling was a bit less urgent and returning back to like normal. Because normally, you know, you get the urge to go to the bathroom and it's no big deal. You don't feel like um, you absolutely have to go until you've been holding it for a second. But when you have a UTI, you feel like when your bladder's full, you have got to go now. When I got to day three, I noticed that I really didn't have that burning sensation at all. Well, actually, no, I had the burning sensation had really become like severely muted. And I noticed that now it was kind of normal, you know, uh, my bladder felt normal as far as being full, you know, I just kind of got that signal to go to the bathroom and I would go like a normal person. And then I had, I noticed that by day four, four and a half, not quite five, that I kind of feel like I really don't have any symptoms anymore. So now what I'm going to go do is take a urine analysis and see if this is what helped me clear that from my system. because. I did a lot of research trying to find something that I could use other than antibiotics because I don't want to kill my entire microbiome. You know, and honestly, 
I don't know about you, but I think the medical establishment is still working out some kinks when it comes to everything and like science is always evolving and we're changing and trying to, you know, get better. But I think you must be in charge of your health. Your doctors are doing their best, but they, at the end of the day, they've got hundreds of people that they're working with and they don't have time to be as personalized as you would like to. And also, nobody knows how you feel better than you. So I think we have to really take our health into our own hands sometimes and use our doctors as allies, but also recognize that sometimes they don't know everything. And you'd rather get to a point where you can completely return to normal and you don't have to be dependent on anything outside of yourself. So with that in mind, I think I mentioned early in the video, after doing a lot of research, I understand that a lot of women who take, not women, people, who take antibiotics um, a lot over the course of their life have higher chances of ending up with autoimmune diseases. And also um, they find that people who have less diverse bacteria end up with higher rates of illness anyway. So it's in our best interest to try to avoid antibiotics when we can, you know, but obviously sometimes you can't and you just, rather than taking chances and developing sepsis or something crazy like that, you should just take your antibiotics. So obviously you have to work that out with your doctor. One thing I noticed was that I was taking a different type of probiotic before and because I just thought like just take probiotics in general, but I found out after some research that we might need a few probiotics that are specific um, for dealing with a strep B UTI um, and those there are three of them that I want to mention so, so that if you don't get this probiotic and you're trying to deal with this issue that you at least find one that has these three things in it. So the first one is um, Lactobacillus salivaris and um, below I'm going to attach the link for an article there. If you look at the PubMed website you can actually see that there are several instances of people finding out that the lactobacillus salivarius is actually very good for counteracting strep B. The second one is lactobacillus ruteri and the third one is lactobacillus rhamnosus. I hope I'm correct pronouncing all of these correctly. I'm going to basically drop the information that I've Google so that you can see it for yourself. I'm not a doctor, so you want to consult with your own people, your physician, and you got to do what's right for you when it comes to your health. But so far, it's been five days of taking these and I feel great. So I will let you guys know how things go. And if this works, sis, you, if you got a problem, you might need this shit right here, right here. If you've got a problem, you might need it. Okay, you guys, so it's been a few days. Today is February 9th, and so far, symptom wise, I'm doing pretty good. Sometimes I feel like I feel a faint little something something, but it, it's not consistent. So I took a urine analysis this morning, and so far, I'm looking at the results, and it looks like I have cleared this bacteria from my system, which is a really good sign. So I'm gonna wait for the urine culture to come in and maybe I'll update you guys in the morning. But what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do the, the whole process over again, one more um, urine analysis, just to make sure because I didn't take any antibiotics. So far, I'm showing no more signs of infection and I only started taking the probiotics on February 2nd, I believe. So it looks like after taking the probiotics for about a week, I've managed to clear this bacteria from my system. That's a really good sign and I feel good about my choice and sticking to my, just my instincts and following my gut. But one thing I wanna make sure is that I do a decent job of sharing information and I know earlier in the video I referenced there were, there were three specific types of bacteria that you should look for in your probiotic. To reiterate, they are Lactobacillus salivarius, um, Lactobacillus ruteri, and Lactobacillus uh, rhamnosus. Those um, are the three that I made sure were in my probiotic and I think if you can't find the probiotic that I mentioned earlier then you should try to make sure that, you, that yours has that. I will post all the information that I googled down in the description box below. Uh, feel free to just look at everything. I'm going to put all the links for all the information that I can possibly find for this because when I was looking on the internet I did not see enough information. But I wanted to just leave you guys with a few things. And that is increasingly we are seeing a situation where there's a lot of antibiotic resistance, meaning that there are situations where people have these bacterial infections and the antibiotics are not able to help them. 
And we see that specifically with things like gonorrhea and other STDs and also just staph infections, um, infections that people pick up from the hospital or, or how people get infections. So I think it's important that we consciously think about the things that we're taking antibiotics for because you don't want your body to be in a situation where you're resistant to all these bacteria because of all the antibiotics we receive through our food and through our medications and then get in a situation where you might need a round of antibiotics and they don't have anything strong enough for you. So we just wanna be conscious when it comes to overdoing it on the medicine. And of course, you don't wanna be in a situation where you don't take medicine and you should have. So obviously, doctor, your doctor, and the conversation you have with them is very important. I understand that for strep B UTIs, that typically there are three antibiotics that are possible they could give you. I hear number one is penicillin, and then there's another one called ampicillin, which I understand is um, made from the same mushroom as penicillin. And then the third one is ciprofloxacin. Now, I mentioned earlier before, but I think you guys should really do your research. A lot of antibiotics are linked to things like thoughts of suicide and autoimmune conditions. Don't take my word for it, do your own research. And finally, I just want to remind you guys that when you have a UTI, you want to drink a lot of water. The goal is to flush your system out and really get those liquids moving so that you can try your best to pee out whatever bacteria it is that's bothering you at the moment. Um, because when you get a UTI, typically the way it works is that there is a bacteria that came from the back and made its way to the front. And sometimes that's because people wipe the wrong way or because, you know, maybe you sat in something, some contaminated water or whatever the case is, um, or you didn't pee after having sex, whatever. In some way, usually it means bacteria from the back got to the front and it did not get peed out in time before it made its way up the urethra and started to stick to your bladder and now is causing you problems. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that they find that people who are vegetarians and consume more of a plant-based diet don't get UTIs as often, and that's because they don't have the presence of E. coli as heavily in their bowels. People who have lower presence of E. coli in their stool have lower chances of it getting from your, your butt to your perineum to up into your urethra. So it's just something interesting to keep in mind. They say that you should eat lots of fruits and vegetables, and a lot of the um, articles and things that I came across kept reminding women to eat food that was high in water content because it also helps your system with the flushing out process. And I found in the PubMed database, if you go online and you type in PubMed, it's a, it's a database where they show you um, medical journals and peer review articles and you can put things like Google Scholar also, of course. But if you type in things like chaga and amla, you'll see that they are, are pretty good when it comes to dealing with both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. And I believe strep B is a gram-positive bacteria, so having things like chaga that are really high in, in antioxidants might be something good that you could also add when your, your body is trying to get over something. Also, it's interesting, there's a lot of papers on the benefits of chaga mushrooms when it comes to helping with things like COVID and people who have long haulers um, issues. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor, so you have to do your own research and of course consult your physician, but it's good to start you know, finding our own information and hopefully that this video has helped you in some way. I really hope it has. And I hope that you're able to get some relief if that's what, if that's what you need. And the last thing I wanna remind you guys of is if you're going through a UTI, one of the best things you can do if you are a smoker or you occasionally smoke a cigar or you're a weed smoker, they say that you, while you're dealing with the UTI, you should stop smoking so your body can just have a better chance of getting over everything. So thanks for watching this video, you guys. Please hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing if you made it this far. And I hope that some information in this video has helped you in some way.